Are you struggling to sell to people? Do you have difficulty finding the right kind of buyers? Is this becoming a struggle to you? Are you really facing a lot of difficulty knowing who to sell to and how to sell to those kind of people? Right now, I'm going to tell you about the four kinds of buyers that are in the marketplace and how you can be able to sell to them and make a profit. Now, let's get just directly one-on-one -on -one to uh, what I'm talking about today. So the first kind of buyer or the first kind of client that you find in the marketplace is called the cheap customer or the cheap buyer. Now, this is the kind of person who uh, is always looking for the cheapest thing possible in the marketplace. This kind of customer does not really think about anything else but offers, deals, how much it's selling. He, when this kind of customer, let's say for example, uh, you have a hotel, these are the kind of people who just go straight to the price and then on the other side of reading what now uh, the price entails, you know, like what is being sold. These are the kind of people who don't even think about anything else. They only think about exactly what is being sold and how much it is. They only value the price. They only value the price. Nothing else that they think about. Now, this kind of customers, how are you going to find them and how are you going to understand them and how are you going to sell to them? The cheap customer and this is exactly what the Chinese have been able to do because they have adopted the, the kind of style of selling. Most places, Chinese, they, they, they are well known to sell so many things in Africa and sell in the third world countries, mostly because they know most of the clients there, they only look at the price. They don't look about anything else. So when you're selling to a cheap customer, the only thing that you should put in your mind is the price and the deal. When you sell into this customer, no matter how much the price might be high or what, try to pretend or try to make it to seem as if you've given them the best kind of offer which they will never find anywhere else. A good example, during towards Christmas, most of the people when they're selling their products, this is what companies do, maybe you've never understood. You go to Tuskies, you go to Nakumat, you go to whichever Ukwala supermarket or whichever supermarket. Just slightly before Christmas uh, time, that is on December, they tend to raise the price first. If something was selling at about 500 shillings, they will raise it to about 800 shillings and then they will start selling it at that amount and people will notice that price and get the price will stick into their minds. Then exactly towards Christmas time, that, that month of Christmas, they are going to say we have slashed the same amount into half. Now what have they done? They have just played with your psychology. The price initially was selling at 500 uh, uh, Kenya shillings and now they have taken it to 800 shillings and people have already gotten used to this 800 Kenya shillings and then towards Christmas they say we have slashed the same to half. Now they have put it to 400 shillings. This is just to play with your mind and to show you that you're getting the best deal, the best offer. So people will be flocking to the supermarket to buy whatever is is been slashed into half, not knowing that all they have, you have done to them is a mind game. So, if you want to sell to a cheap customer, try and give them deals. Give them a price which has never been seen, the idea which has never been seen. This is only for you. Don't even tell anyone else. This is for you. That is the only way you're going to sell to a cheap customer. The second kind of customer that I'm going to speak about is called the difficult customer. Now, who is a difficult customer? This is the kind of customer who makes your day feels to, to feel as if, you know, have you ever seen someone who makes just, you have a bad day, but he makes it e even worse. This is a kind of person who is always complaining, always making noises, always trying to make you feel as if your day sucks, your business sucks, everything is just worse on exactly what you're doing. They don't, they don't want to buy. Even if they want to buy, all they want to do is to make a lot of noise and to make you feel it's not worth it. I'm wasting, am I wasting my time? What is, 
a good example. You've seen in, in uh, bars and restaurants, there are guys who come all the time to try to sell shoes, trying to sell jackets and things like that. They're, they're only trying to hustle. They don't have a problem with anyone. And they tell somebody, hey, I'm selling a shoe for 1,500 Kenyan shillings. And then immediately you'll see another person who is seated down there. He has not been asked anything, or maybe the, the seller has just said, I have shoes for 1,500 guys, whoever might want to buy, you can buy from me. This other guy here will start complaining immediately. I know where I can buy at 500, I know where I can get for 1,000 shillings, I know you, you're selling too expensive, it's not worth it, the material is not good, all those kind of complaints. This guy is just complaining and maybe he doesn't even want to buy or he wants to buy but he just wants to make a lot of noise. You've seen such kind of customers in the marketplace who will complain and complain and make you feel so bad. Now, how are you going to sell to such kind of difficult customers? The only way you can sell to a difficult customer is by praising them praising them, making them seem as if whatever they are saying is so legit and so true. This shoe is 1500 Hey, no, I know where I can buy it, 1000 I know where I can buy it, this. You tell them, oh, you seem to be very much knowledgeable. I, I would like to know exactly where you buy because at least I can improve my business. I know, you know, different places. Just try and empower them, try and make them feel, raise their ego, raise their ego. Try and make them feel what they wanted to feel. If they tell you, I know where I can buy, oh good, that is really, really beautiful. Please kindly give me a contact. Help me see where I can be able to improve my... Of course, they have no contact, they have nothing. They're only just trying to make your day difficult. And what you're going to do to them, you will have raised their ego and they will want, they won't want that ego to be put down. Try and show them, wow, that suit you're wearing is really, really nice. I would like, after I sell these shoes, I would like to come and you tell me where you bought that suit. Now they'll feel you've raised them. And within that kind of saying and the way you've raised them, they will not want to be put down or that... Uh, that glory to go down so they are going to be lower on you and they will start now listening to you and listening to what you're telling them because all they needed was their ego to be raised so the other kind of customer that I'll tell you is the sophisticated customer this is the kind of customer that he doesn't want to be told anything he just wants details and time these are the people who if you tell them I'm giving you a deal they will tell you please why are you giving me a deal? Does it mean that you're devaluing what I'm trying to buy? Does it mean that you're not believing exactly what you're selling to me? Is it that you're removing some specs? Are you removing something from whatever thing that you're trying to tell, sell to me? So the sophisticated customer doesn't want deals. He doesn't want deals. He doesn't want anything removed from the initial thing. All that they need is details enough details enough information so that they can go and do their own survey their own investigation and come back when they they have already convinced themselves they need time as well so time and details will make a sophisticated buyer buy so um when i talk about sophisticated sometimes this one is a little bit confusing because most people really don't understand the kind of sophisticated customer because sophisticated customers as well, yes, they will ask for a discount, but they will just tell you, give me a general discount. Fine, I give you a 5% general discount, that, that's okay. But they will not really press and press and press those. So that's how you're going to understand the difference between a cheap customer and a sophisticated customer. They know what they want. They know exactly what they want to achieve. If you're selling to them a pro box and they wanted a succeed, they, they will tell you, no, I did not want a pro box. I needed a succeed, to be precise. I did want, not want Toyota Corolla, I wanted Toyota Corona or another. Div they have specifics. I didn't want, want a Noah, I wanted, a, um, I don't know the other one, what's, what's it called? Eh? A, a, a Tones, maybe. You will not convince them between the two. They know exactly what they want. All they need is details and time. And the final kind of customer that I'm going to tell you today is called the affluent customer or the affluent buyer. Affluent buyer is one kind of person who buys things out of emotions. They buy, uh, they love luxury, they love status, they love class. They, they buy things because of how they feel, how it will make them feel. There are guys who, when they're buying cars, they will not worry about how much the car is. All they need to know is how the car will make them feel. 
you tell them that there is a um, a Prado, maybe a Toyota Prado, for example. There's a Toyota Prado and there's a Toyota, uh, there's a Range Rover here. For them, they will not really look at the details so much, but how it will make them feel. Maybe a Prado, you'll tell them it is good, you know, um, the consumption is lower. If you go to mountains, it's very okay, you know, all those kind of good details about the Prado. But if they have set their minds on a Range Rover, no matter how much expensive when it comes to the fuel consumption, uh, maybe details and other things that may involve Range Rover and how it's not favorable when you go into the villages and things like that, they will not want to hear. All they want to feel is the feeling that they will get when they're in that Range Rover. It has some massage seats, it has all that they have ever anticipated. It has the status, the class, the image that they're looking for. They're not looking for the price. So this kind of affluent customer, the only way you're going to sell to them is by trying as much as you can to give them enough emotions, enough feelings, enough um, make them feel the way they want to feel. Tell them, sit on that seat. How do you feel? How do you feel? How, are you enjoying it? Is it nice on you? How will people look at you when you go to the village? How will people look at you when you go to your job place? Give them enough feelings. So, I hope this it has liberated your mind to knowing what kind of customer you always find in the marketplace and how you can be able to sell to them. Open up your mind and divide this kind of customers, the cheap, the difficult, the sophisticated and the affluent customer so that you can know who to sell to at what time and open up your mind even much more better. Hope this one uh, makes you understand even much more better and you can be able to grow your business in a much wider, wider way. Thank you very much. You can subscribe down there. There's a subscription button down there. Just subscribe and of course leave, uh, click that notification button so that you don't miss any new video. You can like, you can share, you can comment and I'm sure when you share the same, somebody else can be able to get the information. It can help them in one way or another. Thank you and God bless you.